Thanks for tuning in, guys, to the Pest of Lawn GJ, and this is our Ugly Lawn Tenacity Challenge. Let's get to it. So hard to believe it's been three weeks since our last update, but here we are. Now, for those of you just catching up, uh, go into my playlist and start watching the Tenacity Lawn Challenge. That way you guys can kind of see where we've come from and where we're about to go. Now, I always like to start off just by kind of showing you what's going on in the lawn, so let's get started. Now, overall, we're making some solid improvements. As you can see, both these sections are starting to look much better than they did last year, which I'm stoked about. But we've got some big issues that we got to deal with. Mother Nature, she's sending her weeds and she's sending them pretty hardcore. We've got a ton of broadleaf weeds and the debris just does not stop. Now, a lot of this is uh, rising to the surface, which they did a uh, power rake, I didn't do it. Um, and so this is just sitting there and it's not coming out with the mowing, which is causing problems. Now, overall, this patch isn't too bad other than the uh, broadleaf weeds. So we're gonna have to do something about that today. Now, this is the patch I was most interested in because it had bunching tall fescue, but it doesn't look like the bunching tall fescue is going to be affected much. I mean, we've got a little bit of that uh, lack of chlorophyll where it bleached it, but it's not really dying. However, these patches of quack grass that we have, they're a lot more bleached out. Um, they're a lot more stressed out. So we're gonna hit it again with tenacity today and then uh, we'll see what we can get. <laughs> Here comes my favorite part, this view. Oh my gosh, it's pretty crazy. Snow-capped mountains looking pretty good. If you're from Utah, you say mountains instead of mountains. That's just how we do it apparently. And then bam, there we go. Pretty crazy. Now again, we've got a patch of quack grass. It's bleached out fairly well. Now this is our area where we had those uh, broadleaf, uh, those purple broadleafs. As you can see, they're nuked, they're cooked, gone, done. And I was afraid that we were gonna have to re-overseed this area, but the bluegrass is actually taken off now. Uh, which is nice. It's a lot healthier, a lot more thick, and that really, really woody um, stuff that looked like clover, it's also gone, which is really cool. And then we're left with uh, this, though. I'm not too sure what this is. Um, probably hit it with a little bit of speed zone, sulfentra zone, see if we can get some push. Now, overall, considering we've only done one fertilizer service, and we've only done one weed control application for this season, I'd say we're doing pretty well. Um, now for a lot of us, including myself, sometimes it feels like we're watching paint dry. We've got a little be a little patient. I mean, this lawn was so bad. We're having to fix some of the uh, issues uh, like the calcium that's tied up in the soil. Uh, and we've done a lot. Now, luckily our preparation from last fall we're starting to see some of these results, which I'm pretty stoked about. Garden area, we have a ton of these white top weeds, but once we get into the grass, again, the quack grass is getting bleached out and the blue grass is actually pushing pretty well. Biggest problem up here, just looking at the uniform pattern, you can see just by the dirt here, it's dry. So we gotta focus on watering. I'm gonna give the homeowner a call, give him a tisk tisk because the one thing he agreed to was watering. Now our number one focus needs to be watering. And this is what I had a huge talk with the homeowner last year when I took on this project. Um, I'm gonna have to just let them know. The number one thing you don't want the soil to do is to dry out. Once that bacteria dries out, it's really hard to get it back into the motion that we need it to be. So that would be the number one thing. Now being so early on in the season where the soil temperature is just hitting 60 degrees, I'm not as upset as if this was gonna be like mid-June, outside temperatures are 110 degrees, but I still really don't wanna see this right now when we're trying to push growth. Ugh, F guys. <laughs> I really don't wanna do it, but guess what? We're gonna do it. You gotta get the job done right, so let's get to it. Well, the last thing I wanna do this week is uh, run the uh, the old sun gel here, but <laughs> here we are. Now, a lot of you guys are gonna wonder, hey, why aren't you using the Greenworks? Why are you gonna use the sun gel? Well, it's because I loaned the Greenworks out. Um, also, kinda wanna see how easy it was to swap this out. 
Now you guys at home, if you're not familiar with it, the, this is the Scarifier attachment. And this is when you actually have a thatch problem, uh, not a debris problem. We have a debris problem, so we want to go back to the tines. Now this is more of a comber. Um, so the difference is, is this is going to comb. It's not going to be as aggressive on the surface um, as this. And right now, since we overseeded last fall, we have some new growth pushing through. I don't want to dig through the thatch. He really doesn't have a lot of thatch because he's let the lawn dry out so many times. So I just want to get the debris off. Now it's really important that you guys use the correct extension cord and it's got to be the right gauge. So on a 50 footer, it's got to be a 14 gauge and on a hundred footer, it should be a 12 foot gauge. So I picked one up from the Harbor Freight. Um, it was $69 plus tax. You can get these cheaper off of eBay, but this is a heavy gauge rated extension cord and it had great reviews, but let's get the dirty work done, shall we? Now, unfortunately, they didn't do the best fall cleanup. And as you can see, there's just so much dead debris that has choked out a lot of our new growth. Now, what I'm hoping for is that uh, by doing this comb over with the dethatcher, that we can really get a lot of that growth back because we know that the seed germinated. We know things are going well. All right, guys, here's the fruits of my labor. And as you can see, pretty extensive amount of just debris that was sitting on top of the soil. Um, as for the first pass, I actually played with a few settings. And as you can see, it suffocated a lot of our new growth. Sad face, but what do you do? Um, the further we get into the lawn where it didn't have as much debris, but you can still see there's still more. So I'm gonna have to go from that 10 millimeter setting uh, and I'm gonna go down to five. I worry a little bit about scalping, so I don't wanna do that. But as you can see, the lawn is much thinner than we had anticipated due to the lack of water and the debris on the soil. Now, as you can see, you can actually see the dirt now. Everything is breathing but it's dry. So focus again, I'm gonna nail this home. Water, water, water. Um, overall though, color's good. Things are looking decent and we're moving forward. Really just wanted to walk you through real quick and let you know that I did all the other sections. A uh, little bit lighter, the city did some sort of water repair to the line here and they really creamed the parking strip. Um, however, these sections here, you can see pretty green. Uh, it's looking good after I blow all the grass off. I think we're gonna be fairly satisfied. Um, the backyard was interesting. Had a little bit more of that sticky thatch. So I had to uh, go a little bit more aggressive back here to get it to breathe. Um, but as you can see, it's coming in nicely. We got a lot of bluegrass coming in over here. Uh, really happy with the uh, amount of seed that actually germinated. Here, oh, sorry guys, I can't let you go by with that. Boom, there it is, so cool. And back to reality. So, anyway, a lot of the grass seed came through just fine back here. And I think with our next step, we're gonna be pleasantly surprised. Now, this section up top, as we go up the stairs, still having a lot of problems. We didn't get a lot of seed germination here. I had a real thorough talk uh, with the homeowner because it's dry. All this stuff is bone dry and we wasted a ton of seed. He's got sprinkler problems over here. I don't think any of the seed germinated over here. Um, well, take it back. This section right here did, but nothing over here next to the Chester van. <laughs> so ugly. Uh, anyway, um, but you can see we're dealing with a lot of baldness over here. And that's not just because the power rake, a lot of it is leaves. You never got the leaves off over the winter. Woo! Finally got the hard part done, and that is uh, getting that debris off of the top layers. 
A um, couple of things. We've got a lot of bald areas. Um, I don't have peat moss. There's no way to cover it. I'm not going to overseed it today. Um, however, we do need to put down a recovery service. So let me just show you what I'm thinking. <laughs> All right. We're going to do a giant cocktail. Now I've got a couple of concerns. Number one, the soil is uh, bone dry in some areas. So we want to rebuild that. Um, soil temperatures have also changed. So for my recovery service, we've got the Essentials 101. Now it's got um, a lot of humic in it, L aminos, vitamin B2, and it actually does a really good job with stress relief. I use this as a recovery. Now I'm also gonna put some additional miners in because we're in the month of May. Soil temps are about 60 degrees and we're starting to get a lot more push out of the microbes and I need to get those reestablished. Um, I'm also going to use uh, Tenacity as a pre-emergent. Again, uh, I want to push against those less desirable grasses and we're going to use it as a post-emergent for those purposes. Uh, speed zone uh, for the weeds, very, very aggressive. I've got my non-ionic surfactant for my post-emergent control with the Tenacity. Now, I'm going to use a straight AMS. This is a straight 2100 fertilizer um, and I'm also going to be introducing more carbons with my humic and gypsum so pretty simple you guys can mimic this it doesn't have to be the ex exact products now since we had so much debris in the lawn um, I wanted to go ahead and introduce some imidacloprids for control for grubs now for the grub control, I'm just gonna be looking at the label. It's just shy of two pounds per thousand square feet. So I'm gonna be using my Chapin 24 volt rechargeable battery backpack. I've got this, uh, I've got it all calibrated. So I'm gonna need about a backpack and a half uh, to get through this job. Another ridiculous day for the ginger. Now, this is all gonna pay off. I should only have to do this once for the next three to five years, assuming I can get them to water correctly. Now, I'm a little concerned because the watering was not done correctly. So a lot of that growth and thickening up that we were supposed to get earlier, it didn't happen. Now, there is a glimmer of hope. I am seeing a lot of the new stuff on the surface of the soil. So I'm hoping that quick release fertilizer is going to um, help push a little bit more. But guys, if you guys have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments. i uh, love to help you guys out. Till the next time, guys, I'm out of here. Hi, right, Ninja. Yeah. Things are looking really good. Yeah. And I want to tell you how important it is that like the whole of everything, it's very important that we start from the inside out and we make things really nice. And I'm very excited about what's going on since last fall. Like this orange that I'm going to give you, what happens if you don't do the whole? I mean, you can't just do one part of it and then skip a part and come back and try to make it up. It all starts at the beginning of making something whole. So I wanted to give you this orange. Come over and take this orange. I want to give you this orange. Giving me advice. I'm going to give you advice. I'm going to give okay. you an orange. One of us is doing things and one of us sitting in a chair. I know, but that's what my job is. I am the king and you are the ninja. So, anyway. All right, I'll, so I'll go with it. I'll go with it. So, I've given you this orange to let you know the lesson of life. When something isn't whole, what ends up happening? So, you need to make sure we do everything whole, which you are doing. And I want to keep it in plan in your mind because this is the key to success. Uh -huh. Not of just being the ninja, but of life and family. So, I give you my orange. So, when it's not whole, look what happens. What crap is this? Yeah, this teaches you a lesson. Wait, you give me your garbage now? Yes, no. This is what happens if you don't worry about the whole of a project. So, other people, you know, if you want future business, when you remember the whole, then you are going to have all the business in life. One of, us, at, one, of, one of us is working, Vic. Can you stay out of my way? This is, what, this is what we're supposed to do. Here, let me show you about this. What are you doing? Try to work here. All right. 